Welcome back everyone. We've just made a threaded rod on our way to making a bolt with a matching threaded nut. And now that we've made this, we're going to move this out of the way. We're going to move it up a little bit because we need to kind of taper this bottom edge of the bolt. You see, if we were to try and take a nut and put that on there, there's a little too much material on the bottom and it wouldn't start easy. In fact, I don't think it'd probably work at all. So we need to taper that in so that when we put that nut into the the bolt or we put that nut on the bolt, it'll thread in there easy. So let's do that. I'm going to hit the space bar to grab my select tool. Then I'm going to select the entire object. I'll hit M to move it. Click anywhere on the object and lift up. I want to lift up on the Z axis or the blue axis. So if you're having a hard time, if it's kind of moving around on you, hit the up arrow on the keyboard. It'll lock that in. And we're going to go up about 60 millimeters. Doesn't have to be exact, but about 60. So I'm just going to type in 60, enter, and it's going to push it and snap it up to that height. And I want to deselect that. So I'll go to my space bar to get my selection tool over here. Click anywhere so that it deselects this. Click off of the threaded rod. And now I'm going to build a cone that I can use to cut the bottom of that threaded rod. So here we go. First, let's grab our circle tool. I believe it's C on the keyboard, but I'm not positive about that. I'm going to start at the point of origin, click and release, pull out along that red axis, and I'm going to make this about 33 millimeters. 33, enter. And again, we don't want this at a particular angle, so we don't have to do the, the geometry or the trigonometry to calculate and figure out exactly how big the circle needs to be or how far down the cone needs to be. This is just kind of a ballpark to help you feel a little more comfortable as we build this together. So if you went a little high or low, that's fine. Now what I need to be able to do is create a point here that I can pull down. So I'm going to make that by using my line tool. I could hit L on the keyboard or come over here and click on my line tool. And I'm going to make a T that goes straight across through the midpoint and then from that point of origin or the midpoint down along this red line to the edge. So let's do that. With my line tool, I'm going to make my first click where this green line comes out on that end point. I'm going to go through the middle. I'm going to come to the other side where the green line exits the other side of the circle, make my second click, and I now have a line that goes across there. I'm going to make a second line starting at the point of origin, first click, and I'm going to go along this red axis here, make a click where the red axis hits the end point. Good. And now I have essentially like half of a pizza, a quarter of a pizza, a quarter of a pizza. I'll go to my move tool, hit M on the keyboard or find your move tool over here. Click at this end point, click and release. And I want to be able to pull this up and down, but it's not working for me. It's locked in. Well, I don't want it on that plane, on this horizontal plane here. That's not good. I want it to go vertically. So I'm going to hit the up arrow on the keyboard. And when I do now, I can push and pull this vertically. That's what I'm looking for. So from when it was flat, I'm going to pull down. Okay, let go of my mouse. I'm going to type in, I'm going to go a distance here of 25 millimeters. So 2, 5, enter. And I've got a decent shaped cone. And I want to get rid of those hard edges. I want to kind of soften those lines. I don't want to erase them because that will delete the segment or the plane. I just want to soften them. So I'm going to use my eraser tool. That's E on the keyboard. You can click it over here. And I'm going to use my modifier key. Okay, so you're going to hold down your option or control key. Zoom in here. And I'm just going to click on each of those three lines. So it softens and gives me a, a better, better cone there. Good. I'm now going to select that cone and I'm going to push it up onto my threaded rod. So hit my space bar for the select tool. Click and drag over the entire cone. Hit M on the keyboard for the move tool. Click anywhere on my cone. I'm going to lift up. You can hit the up arrow if you want to to lock it in to that Z axis. Make sure you don't miss anything. And now when I do this, I want to make sure that that cone 
does not go all the way through that bottom plane, okay? It's important we have those threads there at the bottom. So I want to be able to make sure, I'm going to kind of rotate to the bottom of the object here. I want to make sure that there's still some left. So it should look kind of like a circle there, right? So I'll lift it up a little bit. There it looks good. I'm going to click. And now I've kind of stuck that cone in the threaded rod. And I now need to merge all of that geometry. So hit the space bar to grab my selection tool. I'm going to select everything. And when it's all selected, I'm going to intersect all of that geometry with that selection. So I'm going to right click on where, on, on any part here that's selected. And I'm going to intersect the faces with the selection. Great. Now I need to clear away the junk that I don't want. And I'm going to do that with two tools. I'm going to start with the eraser tool, and then I'm going to go to the selection tool. So I'll grab my eraser tool, and I'm going to click just on this line, the top ring of the circle, and delete that. That deletes the ring. And now as I zoom in here, you can see that this line right here is where the cone cut through. That's where we're trying to taper. So I'm going to switch tools, and I'm going to delete this plane here, this surface, with my select tool. So I'll hit the space bar to go to my select tool, and I'm going to click once, and that's going to select all of that outside part, that outside part of the thread that I do not want. Okay. I'll delete that. I'm also going to select a second plane here, which is the bottom side of that thread. Click once on that. Delete or backspace on the keyboard. I've now deleted two of those surfaces. I'm going to roll to the bottom, and I want to delete this flat disk. So I'll click on that. Looks kind of like a circle or an O. Delete that. And now I want to be able to delete these lines. But these lines, if I just click or triple click on them, it's going to select the entire object. That's not what I want. What I want to do is to have just those lines that I think should be kind of out in space there deleted. But what happens is they're actually connected, right? So I need to delete just the little line segment that connects them. So where this line wraps up to the threaded bolt, I'm just going to click on that line segment, hit delete. Now it's no longer connected. I'll do the same on the bottom where this thread comes in. On that line, I'll click on that, delete. Now when I triple click on this line, it selects just the line because it's kind of out in space. It's not connected to that threaded rod anywhere. I'll hit delete deletes that part, and the last step is to delete this. Now, if you were making a screw, you could leave this on here, right? But we're making a bolt, so I'm going to click that, delete. The only thing left to do is I need to make everything the exterior face. That's what this white, these white lines are. So this is like this bluish, grayish color. I want to reverse the face here. I don't want the inside of the object. I want the outside. So I'll click on that, right-click, reverse faces and this little spot right here. I'll click on that, right click, reverse faces. Okay. So now we have a threaded rod where we just tapered the bottom edge and next we will place the nut on top. Good job with that.